So welcome to another interview. We are here with Shannon Allen, who is going to co-edit our upcoming science fiction anthology coming out in 2021, which is a long way away. Hi, Shannon. Hi, how's it going? Good. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, keeping web... busy during these strange times. Keeping busy. Um, for us, our life didn't change a whole lot. Uh, my husband works from home and I have entered that wonderful part of life where <laughs> my time is my own. Uh, so, you know, not going out for days at a time or at all is it works, right? <laughs> I agree. I mean, we, my husband's in education, so it's a little crazy right now for him. Oh, yeah. It'd be a bit crazy. But, um, but I worked from home long before it was cool. So, <laughs> and we're just happy as happy reading, watching TV, gaming. We don't need to go out either. No, you know, the, the only tricky part of all of it, of all of it was um, we had a new granddaughter born at the beginning of November. Oh no. So <laughs> just like, okay, you need to quarantine for two weeks and you got to do this and got to do that. So we could at least get a glimpse of her. Beginning so. of November. Yeah. So I know what they were doing at the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, other than that, life has been okay. It's been okay. You know, more time to procrastinate about writing. <laughs> <laughs> Which was going to be my next question. Are you writing anything? Because I know I am writing. what you're doing for us isn't coming out for quite a while. It's, yeah, it will be a, a little bit for, for Taiki. Uh, we, our launch date will be August of 2022. Yeah, I assumed it would be for When Words Collide. Yeah, so we're a little ways away, but we're gearing up to send out invitations and trying to iron out the last few details of the types of stories we're looking for. We have a general theme of what we're looking for, but... So I'm doing that. I'm working on a novel. I'm finishing up a couple of short stories. Um, I don't participate in NaNoWriMo. <laughs> <laughs> I like my sanity just a little bit too much. Um, but I do use November as a month where I'm more dedicated to my writing. Okay. So I don't necessarily do NaNoWriMo, but it's just like, hmm, the goal is to get you know, anywhere from 150 to 200 words more per time that I write than I normally do. So. And how did that work out for you? Because this is actually early December when we're recording it, even though it's not going to go out till January. Did you manage to get your goals? Um, yes Ish. and no. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> Ish. Um, like I said, we had a, a granddaughter born. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also had a passing in the family in November. Oh, no, so that kind of put a kink in a few things. Um, so I will say I met my goals ish, as well as can be, as well as can be, and as well as can be, and I accomplished more than I normally would in any given week. Yeah. So that I'll count it as a win. Yeah. I'll count it as a win. You kind of have to nowadays. You do. You I'll take your wins take it where wherever you can. I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just take it wherever I can get it. So, yeah. Do you participate in Nanoremo or anything? I like don't that? write at all. You don't write. I don't write. I don't participate in the editing side of Taiki. I'll once you guys are done and the book's edited, I'll make it look like a book and then I'll convert it to an ebook. But yeah, I well, don't have good. that kind of creativity in me. But you know what? The back end to get the finished product out there that looks nice is in a format that people enjoy, that's a skill set too. It's not a skill set I have. You know as I tell people is my name's in an awful lot of Taiki's books. Because <laughs> it's in the copyright page. So it's in the copyrights. So yeah, 
Although at Words Collide once, I mentioned that to someone who was looking at some of the books at our table. And he goes, oh, so you sort of pretend to be famous along with whoever the author is. And I went, I'm not sure if I've been insulted or not. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it's the people that do the finishing up, the cleaning up, the copy edits, the line edits, the formatting. Those are the geniuses and the fairy godmothers or godfathers <laughs> of publishing. Yeah. Margaret right? does all the editing. I, you know, yeah. I'll convert <laughs> things to Canadian. How to convert things to Canadian, you know? Yeah, I do all that. If it, so I have to go through and go, no, color spelt with a U. We color spell spelt. center R-E. We <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but... A writer can put all kinds of wonderful words on a page, but without the editors and formatters and everything, it means nothing. It's we need the other people too. Definitely an editor. I've seen definitely some editor. books that lack editing. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. You know what? It should be part of the writer's ten commandments. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not send anything out without an editor. Well, even if you self-publish, I fully believe you should send it, you know, spend the, few, the money to get it looked at by an editor. I, I'm full, fully support that. I think everything should be edited. Yeah, because you can usually tell the difference, even on self-published, about the ones who have yep. had it looked at professionally. and who have You can. Been. You can, and it makes a world of difference. You know, a big, big difference. So, so oh, I'm yeah. going to jump around because mm -hmm. that's how I roll. It's, it's okay. I suffer from squirrelitis, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> um, I know you like to travel a lot. Obviously, you haven't been. So how has that been? <laughs> um, that has been interesting. <laughs> um, uh, and especially because Facebook being the goblin wonderful thing that it is it goes up oh here's memories from three years ago and i'm going oh. <laughs> yeah i remember that trip and um we are fortunate enough to be able to travel once every three to four months so we do anywhere from three to four holidays a year wow and uh see the benefits of kids not being home well, my kids are grown up and adults, and but we're homebodies. I travel once a year, and that's about it. Yeah, no, we we do travel a bit when it pre-COVID. Yeah, well, um, yeah, you did travel a bit. We did. Um, husband has got very itchy feet right now. It's just like, oh, he needs to go. He needs to go. I threatened to build him a sandbox in the basement with a sun lamp and a beach chair. <laughs> And the, and the umbrella don't forget the umbrella and the umbrella with some drink with an umbrella in it yeah <laughs> you know but it will come back yes the time, time will come and vaccines that may or may not be out there will start working <laughs> and you know and the ones that can come to Canada when they're ready will be great and you know, another year to 18 months, we'll probably be traveling again. Oh, yeah. No, I expect so. I expect so. I mean, I'm not, we're not in the group that should be part of the first wave of vaccines. Oh. You know, um, frontline workers, essential workers, they need to get it first. Yes. And then there's a hierarchy down that Jojo Common, like me, we can wait. Yeah, and me. Although yeah. there's discussion on um, my hu my husband's in education, like I said, so there's the discussion on that part, which he doesn't think he needs to be that high up, but depends upon where you look at it. It depends on how you look at it, and I think a lot depends on the age group of kids you're working with. He works with that middle group, so half his school is out right now because he grades um, five to eight. Okay. <laughs> and half the school is in. He's got fives and sixes in there and seven and eights are gone. Yeah. Yes. So it's, 
It's interesting times. Yes. And I think it will be, and I'm looking forward to the type of fiction that's going to get generated during this time. Although I'm tired of TV shows <laughs> generated. Yes. Yeah, there's... And we watch so little TV, but it's still... <laughs> it's still... <laughs> it's still covered. Like, yeah. No, we're... We don't watch cable shows. We have a few of the streaming services. That's what we do mostly, but you catch the commercials. You catch the commercials, right? And you can kind of pick and choose a little bit more of what you want, but... You know, it will be interesting to see that in six months time, eight months time, are we going to have a wave of really dystopian based fiction that's going to come out? That could be are okay. We, you know, are we going to have pandemic stuff come out more? Or are we going to have some really hopeful <laughs> stuff because people need something to latch on to, right? So it it doesn't exist in the world, so let's write about it, so maybe it will. Maybe. Right. You'll probably get a bit of both, a mixture of both, I think. I think we'll get, yeah. We'll get both. But it'll be interesting to, I'm looking forward to it, because it's going to be yeah. interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I don't miss, like, we were never big movie theater people. You know, we'd wait till it comes to TV, so. Yeah. So I don't miss that. There's certain ones I miss seeing in the theaters, but nothing right now that I'm sorry I'm missing. I think you know? Wonder Woman's the next big one that was supposed to come out. And they're going to stream that. Yeah, I think that one is is a streamable one. I don't know if I would have gone to the theater anyways for that one. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing on the magnitude of Lord of the Rings <laughs> there right now, so no, I'm okay. <laughs> So if you were traveling, where would you be going today? <sighs> well, we are supposed to be, we would have just been getting back from Austria right now had, had things been different. So Austria would be nice. Austria is a beautiful country. You know, I've never been. I haven't either, but I've seen pictures. I've seen pictures and I've, it's just like, oh, I just, I need to go. Um, a favorite, a favorite place of ours is Barbados. Oh yeah. Love Barbados. It's, it's my heart happy place. <laughs> <laughs> and we've gone for a number of years in the middle of winter, have made some really good friends down there. Know a lot of really interesting, wonderful, fun people. And it's just a beautiful place to go. It's, and it's not a high tourist destination. Really? Yeah, you find there's Canadians that go, mm -hmm. and there are uh, English people that go, like from England. Hmm. Very, very few Americans. Um, lots of Germans. Okay. So it's an interesting mix of people when you're sitting on the beach or in the restaurants, you know, or around the beach bar, because that's where all the interesting conversation happens. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's quite an eclectic mix of people because you've got a very European perspective. You have a Canadian perspective. Mm -hmm. The odd time there's somebody from New Zealand or Australia. So they get thrown into that mix too. So yeah, I mean, being December, we're usually home for December because uh, it's close to Christmas. Yeah, and you have a large extended family. We have a large extended family um, that we usually do Christmas dinner with. This year will be virtual, but yeah. um, which will be an odd experience. <laughs> um, I will not have to cook two turkeys. <laughs> Which would be a good experience, you would think. You would think so, but I'm, you know, it happened at Easter too because we were under stricter lockdowns at Easter time. Yes. 
And there was only three of us, my husband, myself, and our niece who lives with us right now while she's going to school. And there was three of us. And it's just like, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting Paige from upstairs going, oh, are you downstairs? Um, you know, normally Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those occasions for us were anywhere from 32 to 36 people. Wow. And then to go from that to three, yeah. we're just like, oh, but there's, there's not enough food. There's just like, yes, there is. There's enough food. <laughs> there's just three of us. You know, you don't need two turkeys, a ham, and five pies. We're good. <laughs> so are you then an extrovert? Or is it just the way family is? It's just the way family is. Um, I find I'm generally more outgoing with, around family or people yeah. I'm comfortable with. Um, never used to be this way. When I was younger, I was very quiet, didn't say anything to anybody. As I got older, the, I don't know, something <laughs> changed. I don't know. Is it the fact that I got older and went, I don't care anymore? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I know some extroverts who just are not, you know, they, wanted, they like to be around people. So I don't have to be. I'm quite content being home alone, just as happy doing that as being plunked down into the middle of friends and family. Uh, put me into a room of people I don't know or a situation I'm not, I guess, versed in. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll be sitting in a corner listening. I won't be a part of anything, so. Yeah, that's me and my husband sitting in the corner talking to each other, ignoring everyone else. Wow. Uh, I, I listen because then you go, ooh, look at how that person's doing that. <gasps> that would be awesome for a character in a book. <laughs> that's true. You know, the husband is the extrovert. He's out there mingling amongst all the people and he'll know everybody by the time we leave, but I'm not so much inclined. Oh, no, my husband's even more of an introvert than I am. It's like, we have, we, well, we did. We would have people over every weekend for gaming. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of tabletop gaming, but those are people he knows. He, yeah. And sometimes um, relationships change. So someone mm -hmm. will bring someone else over and he's like, I'm just not going to say anything for the first three times. <laughs> not quite that bad I'm exaggerating a bit but yeah but I, I get the feeling I understand that it's just like mm, you don't want to say something misstep misspeak yeah so you'd be a little bit more quiet and it's all good yeah you know I find that there's a healthy balance and we generally marry or <laughs> are in relationships with people that balance us out right I'm more of an introvert and an extrovert when I have to be. He's more of an extrovert. So he's kind of drawn part of that out of me. So. Yeah, I'm more of an extrovert than my husband, but I'm just as happy. Leave me alone with my book. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> you know, so it's all good. It's all good. So you mentioned in your notes because i mm -hmm. said hey what should we touch on to talk about that you like arthurian legends and such we have an yeah. arthurian book coming out it, well in a couple of weeks from when this is recorded it'll be out for a couple of weeks <gasps> by the time this goes out Ooh. um a connecticut gumshoe in king arthur's court by randy oh by randy mccharles yeah, that one's coming out pretty soon i'm looking forward to that um i love it i love randy's writing I've been a fan of it since, oh, a number of years ago, since his um, Macbeth. Yeah, we, he put out Much Ado with Macbeth with us. Then he yeah. did some self-published um, um, non-genre, uh, mystery novels. They weren't mm -hmm. genre. And then he's done this one. And then he's got another one coming out next year. 
Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it because yeah. all things are theory and all. <laughs> that's the passion, right? That's where the passion lies is our theory and it's, you know, our theory and science fiction. <laughs> You know, they're kind of like, mm. but first and foremost is Arthurian. Arthurian legends. Yeah. So what's your favorite Arthurian? Let's go with movie. Why not? Oh. My favorite Arthurian. If I don't want to be serious, uh, Monty Python. Well, yeah, okay. It goes without saying, but if you want to go the more serious, dramatic type movies, there was a mini series out in the 90s, uh, Mists of Avalon, which was based on the books by Marion Zimmer Bradley. Yes. Which was extremely well done. Was it? I read the book, I didn't see the mini series. The mini series was pretty, pretty true to the book. Okay. Um, I know with dramatic roles and producing it on film, there's certain things they can and can't do. Yes. Um, but I found it to be well done. Uh, the young lady, she was the lead in The Good Wife. Her name is escaping me at the moment. I never saw The Good Wife, so I can't tell you. Um, Marceline Angelis, I believe is her name very well cast for the role of Morgana. And I just think it was very well done. Um, one of the problems with Arthurian film is they almost get it right. <laughs> they almost get it right. Um, Juliana Margulies, it says on... Juni Juliana Margulies, that's it. On IMDb. And um, it was well done, and I did enjoy it. It is one that I have on V8. I had it on VHS, now it's DVD. And I do watch it occasionally, every so often. I'm just like, oh, I'm in the mood for something, and throw it in. <laughs> um, but there's so many movies that have come out, like Excalibur, which was done in the 70s. You know, I liked that movie. I know it was I do too. You know, it was what it was, but I still enjoyed it. And I think when you talk Arthurian film, you have to take it for what it is. Yes. It's probably one of the better representations. <laughs> from well, there some... was that more recent one. What was it? Um, they did the, it just came out like a year or two ago. It was called King Arthur? King Arthur. That was not, I would put Excalibur above it. I, yeah, I'm sorry. King Arthur was not raised in a brothel. He was not a street thug. There's actually a podcast I listened to called Our Fake History, and he did a three-part, two or three-part episode um, on the legend of King Arthur. Oh, yes. I will have to. Yeah, he, um, he um, did a deep dive in the legend and then discussed where it might be based on reality and various things like that. It'd be interesting. Okay, I need to read that one. It, it's a podcast. To that one, sorry. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. You know, my brain automatically goes, oh, got to read it. But so we're, in, find it. we're in a day and age now where we have so, so many more options for literature and our exposure to literature and an awareness that's out there that used to be buried in academic papers or opinion pieces that not many people saw. And now we've got podcasts and Facebook live events and all these other things. That's the link to part one. I'll also put it in the show notes of it. Of the oh, link. nice. Of fake history. I will have to now you know what I'll be doing this afternoon. <laughs> well, they're they're a little over an hour long, and it's a three parter. So, <laughs> well, you know, there there's always laundry that needs to be folded. Then you can listen. That's true, right? That's true. 
or in my case, um, my husband is ex-military. So there is the military crease that needs to get put into shirts. So Oh, good Lord. <laughs> I make my husband do his own ironing. <laughs> I work from home. I don't need to iron my clothes. You know, so it, you know, it's nice to listen to something when you're ironing, putting in those creases. So I do it when I'm doing, working on royalties, when I'm looking at spreadsheets. I just think, oh, that's a good time too. Yes. You know, that's a good time to always to shift that attention or split that attention. So it's not so like, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> especially spreadsheets. You know, anything accounting is is an interesting beast in itself. Yeah, you know? it's okay. That's my background by originally. So, um, it was mine too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was five and a half years into what was then called the CMA program. Your Certified Management Accountant. I was CGA. I was four and a half years into it when life hit. And I walked into my boss and at the time and said, I can't do this anymore. I just, I can't. I just don't know where my head, I just can't, right? Mm -hmm. And he's going, okay, let's see what we can do about that. And you know, the old adage, be careful what you wish for. Three weeks later, he walked into my office and said, hey, guess what? <laughs> our, our production accountant, which is very specialized to oil and gas, mm -hmm. has just quit. <laughs> She's given us two days notice. Oh my. Guess what? You're the new pub production accountant and you have two days to learn the job. <laughs> <laughs> and production accounting, I loved. Okay. I absolutely loved it. Um, cause you're dealing with volumes of oil and gas, not yeah. money, right? <laughs> and he was a wonderful boss that he was a firm believer is you had to understand a job from the ground up. Yeah. So I went and worked on the rigs. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, every six weeks I went out to the rigs and worked on them for a week and then came back to the office. So... And this was back in the 80s. Not many women in the oil field working on the rigs at that time. No. So that was an interesting experience. When I was first starting out, I worked, um, and it was seasonal work, so I didn't work there very long, um, for a seismic. So they went out and did the seismic readings for the oil companies. Yeah. So. That, I mean, it's interesting stuff. Yep. You know? Um, if I was to go back into the workforce, <laughs> don't imagine there's much call for a production accountant anymore. Uh, Would, probably less and less. Probably less and less, but, and I'd have to update. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Me too. I've been, I've been out of the oil industry for 30 years now. So it's a long time. Yeah. A long time. But, you know, spreadsheets, regardless of production <laughs> accounting or regular exactly. accounting, they're, they're beastie onto their own, own selves. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's better than when you had to do them by hand. It's better than when you had to do them by hand. Exactly. And <laughs> Put in the calculation and copy it across. Just like, da -da -da. I think that would be the only benefit of me going back into production accounting is I could do the formulas manually. Oh. Where I don't know if they teach the manual formulations anymore. <laughs> I don't think they do. I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in school too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but everything's so computerized now. It's just like, yeah. plug this number in, plug that number in, and t -t 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 it figures it out for you, right? Well, more or less, you still have to tell it how to figure it out. You do. I can, you know, when I do royalties, I can put in any numbers I want, but if I don't tell it how to calculate those sales into royalties, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> then it's not going to do anything, no. no. And then somebody will get a check and go, 
do I fall on somebody about this? Because it's too high, too low, or just, you know? I don't know. I mean, we give reports with them too, so you can... You can gauge it better. Yeah. You know, we'll say, this is your sales in Amazon. This is your sales to Kobo. <laughs> well, that's, that's a wonderful breakdown. Yeah. That's a wonderful breakdown, because as a writer and as an editor, those are figures that are interesting. You want to see... Yeah, we break it down to, we divide it in half because you have your physical sales and then you have your e-sales. Right. So, so yeah, so the physical, and, and you get a different royalty rate anyways for physical versus e-sales. Mm -hmm. so. you would know, I'm assuming you read your contract. <laughs> yes, I read my contract. I was, I was thrilled with the the depth and the how well laid out it was that's it was all a, margaret that's nothing to do with me <laughs> you know it was it was a wonderful contract yeah. it's just like it's just like have you seen this like look look at um my co-editor and myself had quite the conversation going back and forth going look at this contract <laughs> is it what thing I had a semi say in is because when I came on we started doing audiobooks which we won't do we we don't do audiobooks for anthologies just because rights with different authors is right but um yeah I made her add things for audiobooks into the contracts which won't affect you but yeah no but it's it's nice to know that should I do something else mm -hmm. other than an anthology and Taiki is so kind to publish it. <laughs> that's an option to me, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Yeah, we have, we're in talks to most of our current authors. We try to encourage the author, we work hard with them. Yeah. But we try to encourage the authors to record their own audiobooks. A, it's cheaper. Oh. <laughs> cheaper, yep. Um, but we work with them, so it's, it's, a longer process because obviously they're not professionals but we tend to oh, work with them. I know um, a few of our authors have taken that up. Not all of them but you know a few not of them. All them. Have. But then some some people might have that friend that has that awesome voice. <laughs> then you get into and if they do go with the friend then we say okay you work out your own contract with them. Yep. For hey, payments. I'll, I'll cook you a great dinner if you do yeah. this. <laughs> for payments, yeah. Because then you, you know. get into different payment schedule. And... Yeah, exactly. You know, I've been known to bribe people with my biscotti. <laughs> so I don't bake as much since the kids left, and that would be. See, Lyra's yeah. thirty-four, so that would be you know fifteen years or so. Yeah, it it does slow down when they leave. Now, do you well, just have, how many children do you have? We have two girls. Two girls. Yeah. Nice. One's thirty four and one's thirty three. So. Oh, nice. No grandchildren, which is fine by me at the moment. So. <laughs> you know what they they show up when they're ready. <laughs> you know. One will probably never have kids. The other one, I'm surprised, doesn't have kids. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have some grandkids, but our one son, if they do, they do. If they don't, exactly. they don't, which I think is going to be more, more <laughs> the way it's going to go. I don't know if they'll have children. Yeah. But that's okay, too. They are yeah. an awesome aunt and uncle that do all the fun things. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and they don't kids, have to do all the bad things. Exactly. And kids need that aunt and uncle that will go and do the crazy with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we don't bake us because then it would be just us eating the baking. So I, I, I don't need it. <laughs> so what we used to do is around this time, um, our oldest daughter and her partner would come over. And sometimes she'd bring a friend or two too, 
and we would christmas fly the house and we would do all the christmas baking at the same time so that she would end up taking some of it with her and it's not all at home well, that's a good way of doing it yeah you know we do gingerbread cookies and you know sometimes shortbread so usually it's gingerbread cookies because that's an all-day thing when because we hand decorate them and we you know yeah gingerbread is a commitment yeah but um not this year so. <laughs> no not this year they won't have you won't have to do as as much this year no so but you know it's fun then you have them over and you're mm -hmm. just generally getting into the season yeah I just my house has not been converted for the season yet but mine will probably be this weekend I don't like to do it before the end um, of November to me it's just too early it's too I won't do it close to Remembrance Day um, I'm generally a December the 15th person that's about what we are too but I think we're doing it a week earlier just because why not why not you know, why, why not? not? My husband needs a break. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, it's all right. So, yeah. But I've done most of my Christmas shopping because that's all online. Let's face it. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I have two to get for each of our parents, but they're in, in um, prime range. So I'll get it next yeah. week. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm done. And even in the past, I'm usually done by the end of November because I refuse to go into the stores in December. I haven't gone into a store shopping for years. No. I can get everything I want online. And I <laughs> either send it direct or I'll send it here and then ship it. But yeah. And then ship it, yeah. Because well, even it's... the smaller stores, you can usually get it shipped to you. Usually can, yeah. So. And especially now, right? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't something they offered before, they are offering it now. Yeah, because I found this cool little, it's an advent calendar. My husband plays the guitar, so it's an advent calendar, and each day is a different little mini guitar. So. Oh, that would be wonderful. So I, I found that. Unfortunately, it's not going to, it's not here yet, so he'll have a week to just open up immediately. <laughs> but yeah, so you, you can still That's get okay. the little store stuff. You can. You can. And I know in Calgary anyways, at, and in Okotoks, because I'm halfway between the two. I'm in Airdrie, so I, it's fine. Ah, so same thing. A lot of the smaller stores are doing the curbside. Yeah. You know, you pull up in a special designated stall, you do this bone thing, and they come out and go, here it is, and plunk it into your trunk, and everybody's happy even our vet does that because our cat's old so she has special um food that she eats oh yeah and same thing i call the vet and say okay i want to get this food and then i get to the door i'm here and they'll same thing bring it out yeah you know it people have gotten so very inventive over the last what is it eight months that we've been doing this six months yeah eight months i think you're right it's i think it's March. eight yeah, yeah since March. So, you know, people have gotten inventive and creative and it's just a new way of doing things. Yeah. And, you know, I'm pretty fine with it. If this is the new normal, for the most part, I'm okay with it. It can be like this, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So am I. So am I. I don't need to go into a store all the time. And uh, No. It's, if I go even before all of this, it was just like, this is what I want. This is where it is. This is what I did too. Go in, get it, get out. I was never a browser. No. Although my husband was amazed because clothing you generally still have to go in and try. Mm -hmm. But we went online and because he always gets new shirts and slacks for, for the new school year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I ordered it all online and it worked out perfectly and it fit him perfectly. And he was just. Well, then that's the way to go. It is. And I'm like, that must be nice. You have a normal body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's harder to do that as a woman. But... I, I think so. Women's clothes are more 
diversely sized? Definitely. You know, my slacks range from size 8 to 14, depending yep. on what brand. I'm like, okay. Depending on the brand, depending on the store, and depending on the fabric. That's true. Yeah. Right? So men are usually a cotton poly mix for their shirts. Well, also men, like for his pants, they're not a size 8, 10, 12. They're a size waist size and length, you know, exactly. 36, 32 or whatever. Whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, whereas women, you're going by 8, 10, 12. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. Why can't I be measured like a man? I know my waist size and my length. And then we'd then pants would fit yes. better, right? Because there have been times in my life where you're between two sizes. Yes. You know? So you're either constantly pulling them up because they're that little bit too big or you can't really breathe <laughs> because they're just that little bit too small yes so <laughs> you know if, if you could buy by waist size i would be a happier person yeah waist size and length because i'm short so i need <laughs> like I, I yeah i feel yeah i'm only i'm only you know i'm i'm not overly tall so <laughs> I like how you glazed over your height. I'm only not overly tall. <laughs> not overly tall. <laughs> not overly tall. <laughs> you know, a little bit bigger than a gnome, but you know, <laughs> not as tall as an elf, you know? <laughs> Somewhere in there. It depends upon your elf. Are we talking like Legolas elf or are we talking Santa Claus elf? <laughs> Legolas elf. Legolas elf. You know, yeah, the second literary love of my life is Tolkien. <laughs> so, you know, Arthurian, Tolkien. Uh, you and my husband would get along. He reads, <laughs> he reads the books every year. And, and there's the, the, five, the five main ones. So there's the Cimmerillion, The Hobbit, and then the, three, the, Lord of, the three Lord of the Rings. Yes. He reads those every year. Every Christmas, we have to watch the extended version of the movies. Of course. Yeah. So it's... Um, I'm in the middle of reading uh, his Brethen and Le Florian right now. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a reread. I, I do. This John, is read, John gets all of them and reads them as it, because yeah. they've been releasing them regularly oh, as well. So. And the exciting stuff in June, there's a new one coming out. So... <laughs> Yeah, so my husband will get that too. <laughs> yes, it's. I know it's not by either J.R.R. or Christopher Tolkien. No, but, but it is by their authorized Tolkien scholar. So I, I will put my faith in the book, and I will be in line <laughs> at Owl's Nest, going. Do you have it? <laughs> Okay. But Owl's Nest, you can order and have do curbside pickup too, so you don't need to go in line. No, and, and truth be told, it's already ordered through Owl's Nest. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, as soon as I heard about it, I called them up and said, this is what I want. And they go, well, it doesn't come out. I know it doesn't come out till June, <laughs> but I'm ordering it now. So they just laugh and go, okay, we'll just add you to the list so I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> And if there, if things are open, Owl's Nest, we do a, a lot of, um, a lot of launch launches there. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not recently, they've been online launches, but. But you know what? They have done a fabulous job with they the always, online. You know, they always put up the stops. They do they snacks do. and drinks and they, you know, and it's a nice setup and yeah, they've always done right by us. So. And any, any other work that I've had published they've done right by it too so they're a wonderful staff wonderful place to go one of those hidden gems that everybody should know about um you know they're just a great place to go yeah, they are mm -hmm. and for and i'll put it in the notes on the youtube channel but for anyone who isn't local to calgary owl's nest is a, a local bookstore <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's family ties to Owl's Nest for me too. So um, the owner, Mike and his wife, mm-hmm. Mike used to work with my dad at Eaton's. Oh, okay. So I remember Mike from when I was much younger. And that when he left Eaton's, he found Owl's Nest books. Uh, he bought it off from the previous owners. So it's just like, oh, we're going home to family. We're buying books from family, you know, because at that time, Eaton's was very much a family place. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody looked out for everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because it was just part of the way that store was run until it's, you know, until it's final years. <laughs> yes. Which is just a dagger in the heart. Just like, oh. Well, I hate to say it, but I was one of those, I didn't shop at Eaton's very often, so. Um, we did because my dad worked there. Yeah. It, it's where my parents met. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was... You know, oh, you go to Eaton's. You need something, you go to Eaton's. Yeah. Right? But those kinds of stores don't really exist anymore. Not really. I mean, no. the Bay would be the closest. It's not quite the same thing, I know, but I think that would be the closest. No, and the Bay has changed over the years, too. It's been a long time since I've shopped at the Bay. So it's It's been a number of years since I've been into the Bay, but... The the grocery store isn't in the basement floor that, anymore. Yeah, the bay doesn't have any of that. No, and Eden's was a little bit more diversified mm-hmm. in their departments than the bay was. But they both had grocery stores. They both had pharmacies. They both had um, the a music Atlantic department. The bay has a, a grocery or a pharmacy anymore. I think they got out of that part. I think that went back in the yeah, mm-hmm. long time ago. A long time ago, you know, they evolved to be more in keeping with the the buying public at the time, and yeah, more like Sears, more like Sears, Sears like, yep, which yep, doesn't like... exist anymore either. But no, it doesn't. <laughs> so <laughs> we're using all these comparisons that don't exist. Yeah. Mind you, I think Hudson's Bay is the only one yes. that is hung in. Yes. And ironically, we saw a Hudson's Bay store in Amsterdam when we were there. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there was a Hudson's Bay store. And of course, we had to go in just yeah, because. Of course. <laughs> and, and the trademark blanket with the bands on the bottom and, and plaid. I don't know why they think Canadians dress in plaid all the time. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that trademark blanket is a little controversial, but okay. It is. It is very controversial as to its history and whatnot. Yes. Mind you, the bay is controversial, I guess, in its history. The bay is controversial too. I mean, there's a whole lot in our history that yes. is in viewing it from the lens of today, you're kind of going, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, a podcast I listened to called, I don't remember what it's called, but it discusses the, um, the not so nice side of Canadian history. Yeah. You know, and it's, I find if we own it, process it, and move on from it, we'd be a better place. Yeah, it's the only part that... It's the only... Yeah. (laughs) You have to start with that, and a lot of people are having issues with that. For a lot of people, it's the hard hard pill to swallow. Yes. But in order for there to be forward progression, I think you have to. Yes. So. So we should get back to books. We should get back to books. Yes, we should. (laughs) Do you have, because um, I was looking up and you have a few books that are out. Yes. Do you have any to show or promote? I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Covers. It's okay. It's not important. 
I have two that are handy. Okay. <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> so I know I put you on the spot. Okay. So this one was a yes. three hide, which is been a wonderful experience to be a part of this project, the Enigma Front project, which is put on by IFWA, Imagine and Fiction Writers Association. And it was with them that my first fictional publication happened. So I think that was, so they're a little bit more near and dear to my heart. Uh, the other one is by Lyda Camelot. Yeah. And you're doing that with Jeff, who is also doing the sci-fi one that exactly with, uh, with Taiki. My partner in crime, Jeff Campbell. Yes. Um, Comes to our Scotch thing every year. So yes. Yeah. No, he um, he got a hold of me for the Camelot. He says, "Hey, I have this idea. Based on your email address, I thought you'd be a great person to talk to." <laughs> Because I had just, I hadn't been part of IFWA for very long at that point. And uh, we hit it off. We like the same kind of quirky. And uh, so away it goes. And it was a wonderful experience. And I'm thankful for Jeff. He was very kind and supporting for my learning curve. I had never professionally edited um, I'd never worked on an anthology other than being a contributor. Mm -hmm. So he was really good in giving me the space to learn. And when I didn't do it right, then he just kind of went, oh, okay, whatever, and fixed it up and away we went. So, and so, yes, the one, the anthology with Taiki, we are teaming up again, which, which I'm looking forward to. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have an approximate, oh, I don't expect it to be exact because we're talking a year and a half away from now, <laughs> an approximate date you'll be open to submissions and it'll go on our website. So yeah, you can watch um, we're looking at sending out uh, invitations for submission in January. So is it going to be invitation only or? At the beginning, it's going to be invitation only. Okay. We're, we have our wish list. <laughs> We have a wish list of uh, both local and international talent that we are looking to tap. And uh, so for the first little bit, it will be by invitation only. And then uh, depending on that response, we're looking at opening up a submission call mid-February, okay. mid to late February. Because by that point, we will have responses back from whoever we've sent invitations out to so and then submissions will close mid-july and that gives you close to a year to put it together it gives us time for to edit to figure out which ones well first of all to pick the stories that we want yes which if it's anything like the camelot anthology sometimes it's a heartbreaker yeah as to, oh, I love them both, but I've loved all of these, and we're, we've only got so much room left in our word count, yep. our cap, and then you have to make that, I'm picking this one. <laughs> <Flip it going. laughs> you know, you do, you're doing that, and then very tearfully phoning somebody else going, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, Camelot caused me a few tears because there were stories I absolutely loved that we couldn't take. Did you and Jeff, now I'm going to get into the nitty, um, sure. uh, go have disagreements on which ones you wanted versus which ones you didn't? Like you like this one, but he didn't or vice versa? Um, or were you pretty much in agreement? We're pretty much in agreement. Our tastes were are pretty aligned in what we do or don't want. And I think it comes down to we're very clear from the very the beginning of what we're looking for. So because of that, at least for the Camelot, and I don't see it being different for this new Taiki anthology, um, that being much different, 
there were a few stories that I had reservations about. Mm -hmm. And my reservations came from, and I think it was point of view that we read certain stories. Yeah. Um, as a woman, there were some stories that I read. And I went, mm, no, 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 <laughs> right? No. And then there was another story. I questioned the, the messaging that was coming through a story. And uh, when I brought my concerns forward, he goes, oh, never thought of that. Yeah. You know, and I'm going, okay, but, you know, it is a context that's within this story that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable with that messaging, right? And as a parent and as a grandparent, I'm not comfortable with that type of messaging being out mm -hmm. in the world with their, that person's name on it and our name on the cover as editors. Yeah. And so he was very good and listened and he goes, okay, yeah, I see that. What if we talk to the author and talk to them and mm -hmm. see what they think? And in that particular story, that author went, oh, that's not what I meant at all. Yeah. That's not what I want coming across. Couple of little edits. And the story is in the anthology. Okay. So, I mean, we're pretty, pretty like-minded. But I, it comes down to, I think, having that very definite, um, definite idea of what we want in there. So it saves a lot of the, the, yeah, it saves a lot on the back end. We have uh, our discussions over tea. <laughs> <laughs> and how will the mindset change? Because Camelot anthology is very different from what you're going to put out for Taiki. It is going to be very different. Um, the one for Taiki is sci-fi noir, yep. um, detectives in space. You know, um, basically Sam Spade, Elliot Ness. Yeah. Not Elliot Ness, but, you know, John. I'm a fan of the night of the radio plays from the 40s and 50s. So Johnny Dollar, um, Sam Spade, <laughs> um, Let George Do It is another one. You know, The Weird Circle is another one that's got some really cool stuff on it. So this one, with it being set in space, a detective novel in space or detective stories in space, we're finding that to take a traditional genre of the 1940s noir detective mm -hmm. and to throw him into space or throw her into space, because we're yes. now in space so we can open those parameters, you know, we can really play with the, the nuances of noir fiction. You know, it doesn't have to be a femme fatale, but you have to have some sort of fatale in there. Yeah, it can be a, what would be the male version of a fatale? Um, I don't men, know. men fatale? Men fatale? <laughs> you know, a, I don't, I don't know. Somebody that's going to put a wrench in your plan, just plain and simple, throw you into the deep end of the pool, right? Or into the deep end of the black hole, whichever comes first, you know? Um, the internet calls it a home fatale, H-O-M-M-E. Oh, okay. There, I've learned something. So femme fatale, home fatale? Yeah. Alien fatale? I don't know. <laughs> True. You know, cybernetic. You to call your Martian fatale. <laughs> You could call them Martian Fatal, you know, cybernetics. Yeah, that's true. Who, who knows, right? There's all kinds of... Or your investigator could be a AI. Your investigator. And there is a line of books. Uh, oh, I got to remember his name. Money is My Business is the first one, I believe, in the series. And his... 
his main character, his detective, is an AI unit that is now obsolete. He's the last one. And his memory tapes only last 24 hours. So he has to charge and dump his memory tape every night. So he's completely blind the next day, except for the mainframe system he connects with to, um, that gives him the highlights of his report. They're fun books. They're a, a lot of fun to read. So it's a unique take on the genre and he's on the wish list of, so if he's listening to this in the future, <laughs> we want you to come write for us. This will come January sometime. I can't give an exact. Oh, so maybe, you know, he might have the, the invite in his hands and going, who are these people? And you can watch <laughs> this and find out. Um, but it's really bad because his name is escaping me at what the What is moment. the name of the book again? Um, Money is my business, or kill, Killing is my business, sorry. Killing is my business. Killing is my business, just to The cover, it's, it's a robot, but the door is tipped. Killing um, is my business. Christopher. Business Christopher. is good. Okay, that's a mega death song. Um, <laughs> Uh, so um, I don't think that's what you want. No, and as I'm sitting here... Adam Christopher? Adam Christopher. There he is. Adam Christopher. <laughs> I have a wonderful memory. It's just very short. Mine is too. You know, it's that squirrelitis thing, right? <laughs> but yes, Adam Christopher. There's a whole series of them, and they're just... They're a fun romp. They really are. It... It would be a, a science fiction fantasies equivalent of a beach read. Well, there, I added it to my Goodreads wish list. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> Killing is my business. It takes place in Hollywood in the, like, 40-ish years, like 1940s. And it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So, yeah. Well, we've been at this... A bit. An hour already. Oh, yeah, an hour already. So give me your pluggables where people can stalk you if, if you wish to be stalked. If we wish to be stalked. You know, Facebook, Twitter, whatever public pages you have, obviously not private. But. Yeah, the public pages are in the works at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, if they're ready when this goes up, I can put them in the show notes. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> publicly would be through Taiki. Yeah. Um, our Facebook page is in the works. Once the invitations get out, we'll put a Facebook page up. Um, our email address is... You don't need an email. Okay. Not unless you want everybody in on contacting no. you. Yeah. No. No, we want, whoever's contacting us, we want... Yeah. But yes, Facebook page to be announced. Okay. Well, it'll go up on our site. So. And if I get savvy enough, maybe a Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret does our Twitter. She does a great job. Okay, then Margaret can do the Twitter. <laughs> awesome. The Taiki Twitter <laughs> hashtag. <laughs> subscribe. That's where you'll find us. Okay, I'll let her know that we just volunteered her for this. We just volunteered you. <laughs> yeah. In absentia, you've been volunteered. That's right. Well, she did get an invite. She could have attended this yeah. this interview. But no, she... Uh, I'm not as up to date on all of these platforms. I know I should be. And I know it's more and more part of publishing that yeah. you need to do. It's part of your promotion. It's part of your promotion. So I guess I need to come into the 21st century. And because uh, all of my stuff is still written out by hand. <laughs> oh my goodness. All my writing is done longhand. Oh my so, so yeah, I guess I need to update myself <laughs> a little bit. Any last thing you want to say before we sign off? Uh, no, just 
thanks everybody for joining us today. It's been a, a wonderful chat and look forward to our book, Postman All, or The Astronaut Only Rings Twice, due out in August of 2022, and any of the other wonderful Taiki publications. <laughs> well, thank you again, Shannon Allen. Thanks. We will talk to you later. We'll talk to you later. Have a great afternoon.